Hi, it's Pastor Steve Ciccolanti. It's so great to be back at House of Destiny. Boy, the word impeachment is being thrown around so much. I wonder what God has to say about it. In fact, Donne, Kim Clement's uh, daughter, has just reminded us what the Lord showed him many years ago back in 2014. And I want to bring that word out, and then I want to give you what the Lord told me about impeachment. First of all, what does the word mean? The word impeach means to call someone's integrity into question. It means to charge but not convict someone of misconduct. Is that biblical? Um, why should we use impeachment? And when should impeachment be used? So we're going to tackle all these questions. First of all, let me go to the prophet's words back on the 22nd of February, 2014. This is what Kim said. Quote, hear me, for I have found a man after my own heart. Boy, that sounds like David. I found a man after my own heart, and he is amongst you. He is one of the brothers that singled out for the presidency of the United States of America. And then I heard gold. I wasn't sure if this was attached to his name. Well, you know, gold is the trademark color of Donald Trump. But he said to me, he will restore the fortunes in this nation because of his brilliance. This man will throttle the enemies of Israel. And out of all the presidents, only Trump dared to move the embassy of America to Jerusalem and then dared to recognize the Golan Heights. This man will throttle the enemies of the West. And there are highly embarrassing moments that are about to occur for many, many politicians in this nation. There'll be a shaking amongst the Democrats in the upcoming elections, plural. I believe that refers to 2016 and 2020. But unsettling for the Republicans. Why is God doing this? For God said, I am dissatisfied with what emerges from both parties. Well, then there you go. God is not partisan, is he? God is for every American, every Christian. They will shout, impeach Impeach, they say, but nay. They will shout, impeach, impeach, but this shall not happen. And then God says, highly embarrassing moments when another Snowden arises. This is an amazing thing that was spoken back in 2014, and this is exactly what we're hearing now, the word being thrown around, impeach, impeach. In fact, four presidents have faced impeachment. Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton were both impeached by the House. However, they were acquitted by the U.S. Senate. President Nixon resigned as the House was preparing for impeachment vote. And President Trump now may be the fourth president to face impeachment. The Lord has told me to write a book, not only about Donald Trump, but for Donald Trump. And one of the main things I talk about is this whole concept of impeachment. Uh, we don't have the book yet, so I'm just saying it to you before the release. But if you are interested, we already have two DVDs by this name. That's, the title of this is called Trump's Unfinished Business. Ten prophecies, ten prophecies that will save America. When a prophecy is given, the people of God must believe it. They must receive it, believe it, and then speak it. Oftentimes, people use the words uh, legal terms in an improper way. They say, they decree and declare. I want you to declare the prophecies, but don't decree, because only the judge decrees the order. Only God will decree this. So he's decreed 10 things, and one of them is concerning impeachment. In several of my chapters, I explain what is impeachment, how it works, why it must be turned around at this time and be used by Trump. They're using it against him, but he's got to now pick up the game and use it against the wicked forces of the deep state. The end times is a season for justice. It is a time for us to pray for the judicial Christ to manifest. We're preparing our hearts for Jesus to come back. And what's he going to do? He's going to judge the world. And you see what's happening in Washington. Elijah Cummings, the congressman from Baltimore, one of the most vocal critics of Donald Trump and the leading Democrat on impeachment, just dropped dead this month. Just dropped dead at the age of 68. 
I said before, nearly all of Trump's problems will come from lawfare, that is the weaponization of the law and the abuse of the judicial system. And all of his successes will also come from justice. And the Republicans and conservatives and Christians often like to talk about economics and interest rates and tax policies, but that is not the time. This is not what the spirit of prophecy is saying. This is now the time for judicial reform. And so we need to be paying attention to what the enemy is doing. You know, they're trying to take over all three houses or all three branches of government through lawfare. They want to lower the voting age to capture Congress. They want to pack the courts to capture the Supreme Court, to in fact nullify all the justices that have been appointed by conservatives. And they now want to impeach the president, the duly elected president, because they know they have very little chance of winning by the vote, by the people's choice. And so they're using the law against the president. Now, if the president is wise, if he would read my book, I believe that he needs, with the help of Congress, he needs to pass a Judicial Accountability and Transparency Act that will restore and bring back public respect for the third branch of government. According to the U.S. Constitution, did you know that all political offices are impeachable? Let me read to you Article 2, Section 4. A lot of people don't know this. They think that it's just for the president. Listen to this. The president, vice president, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. In Article 2, Section 4, this is very interesting because the president has an a, a, a overriding power uh, of pardon, and yet Article 2, Section 2 says, except for this, the president shall have the power to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the United States, except in case of impeachment. And then Article 1, Sections 2 and 3 tells us how it's done. The House impeaches, and then the Senate tries all impeachments. In other words, the Senate becomes a second Supreme Court. So what does the Bible say about this? Is this biblical? Well, if you turn to the Old Testament, you find that the prophet Samuel told King Saul, you can no longer be king. When we look into the New Testament, we find another case where the employer in Jesus' parable told his unfaithful servant, you can no longer serve. So in fact, these are very much like impeachments because in neither case were they convicted in a court of law, but they were in effect impeached for bad behavior. That is what impeachment is for. It's not for crime, it's for bad behavior. Let me quote to you from my book, Trump's Unfinished Business, 10 Prophecies to Save America. The founding fathers were wise to include the power of impeachment. The branch of government they trusted the least was the judiciary because they had seen how the British law and courts could be used to harass, imprison, and even kill citizens. So they, in effect, created a second court the Senate. For cases of impeachment, the Senate becomes the second Supreme Court. However, the U.S. Constitution is fuzzy about what, the, what constitutes good behavior and an impeachable offense. Article 3 says the judges, both of the Supreme and inferior courts, shall hold their offices during good behavior. In other words, they don't have lifetime appointment. We have been misled to believe that. They have an appointment as long as they have good behavior. But the Constitution permits impeachment for treason, bribery, other high crimes, and misdemeanors. It also fails to address the wanton and frivolous use of impeachment as a political weapon. As we've seen, the Democrats call for Trump's impeachment from the first day he assumed office. This provision of the U.S. Constitution can be abused by members of Congress and those working in the permanent bureaucracy of the deep state. Two years and millions of dollars were wasted in the Russian collusion investigation in their hopes of impeaching the president. 
Citizens were legally harassed for no other reason than having a friendship or a business dealing with Donald Trump. The Democrat-controlled House is abusing its power to investigate the president. They accuse first, then they go on a witch hunt to find evidence later. When no evidence was found for the accusation of Russian collusion, they proceeded to throw out other accusations. Now they're on to Ukraine. The Founding Fathers could not imagine an entire House of Representatives abusing such power for their own political gain. They, the Founding Fathers, loved their country too much to imagine a, where future leaders would stoop so low. Leviticus 19, verse 5, says this, You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness you shall judge your neighbor. So why impeachment? What are the purposes of the power of impeachment? John Milton, that great English poet and statesman, also a Christian, he said, no people could call themselves free if they did not possess the power to remove their rulers. And this is what the Christian founding fathers of America saw. Here are some reasons why they gave the power of impeachment to we the people. Number one, it gives people the power to prevent judicial activism. That's legislating from the bench. Christian historian David Barton said, impeachment actually gives the people a means to hinder the court from imposing its own judicially driven political agenda on them. Number two, it ensures judicial accountability. Justice James Iredell said, every government requires it, that is impeachment. Every man ought to be amenable for his conduct. It will be not only the means for punishing misconduct, but it will prevent misconduct. A man in public office who knows that there is no tribunal to punish him may be ready to deviate from his duty. But if he knows that there is a tribunal for that purpose, although he may be a man of no principle, the very terror of punishment will perhaps deter him. Number three, impeachment ensures the longevity of our government by protecting a fundamental principle of our founding documents, the consent of the governed. Number four, Impeachment acts as a check on arbitrary power. Justice Story said, the provision in the Constitution of the United States concerning impeachment holds out a deep and immediate responsibility as a check upon arbitrary power. So when should we use impeachment? It's not just for a president making a phone call to the Ukrainian president. My goodness, if we uh, impeach a president for that, well, which world leader in, in the entire world would dare to speak to the U.S. president? He has to have the right to execute his office and talk to world leaders, put pressure on them if they're acting out of, outside of the interests of America. But consider this. Here are some historical reasons given by Congress why federal judges should be and in fact have been removed from the bench. In 1804, Supreme Court Justice Samuel Chase was impeached for judicial high-handedness and for excluding evidence from trial. He was gone, removed. In 1830, federal judge James Peck was impeached for judicial high-handedness. That's having no regard for the people, for their circumstances, or for the law. In 1862, federal judge West Humphreys was impeached for supporting the secession movement. In 1904, federal judge Charles Swain was impeached for financial impropriety, improprieties and judicial high-handedness. In 1912, federal circuit judge Robert Archibald was impeached for judicial high-handedness and misconduct. In 1926, federal judge George English was impeached for judicial high-handedness and, get this, for profanity. Congress held it an impeachable offense that a judge would swear at a defendant or a litigant. Imagine how many judges today would qualify to be impeached the way that they treat the people with utter contempt. Well, that was historically an impeachable offense. 
Donald Trump needs to bring, with Congress' help, this back. This standard of impeachment is not just to be applied to the presidency alone, but is to be applied for all civil office holders. Judicial high-handedness. In fact, the U.S. Supreme Court Justice uh, John Marshall, this is one of the heroes. When you go into the su Supreme Court, they actually have a statue of John Marshall. He observed, the, pres the present doctrine seems to be that a judge giving a legal opinion contrary to the opinion of the legislature is liable for impeachment. What a standard. So I want to speak a prophetic word right now that God will give Donald Trump, he gave Donald Trump the White House if he would act on four things. Remember I said that? One of, one of the things was abortion. One of the things was putting uh, justices on the Supreme Court that are pro-life. So I gave a prophecy before he was elected. He must do four things, and if he will do them, he will be elected. Now I'm saying the Lord has given me an entire book on 10 things which if he and Congress and any subsequent president would do, God would give him the presidency and the Congress again. If they will use, one of the things is, if they will use the constitutional power of impeachment and clean up all levels of government, and it should start with proceedings to impeach Shifty Schiff and Nervous Nancy and then all the corrupt federal judges. You know, in Australia, our constitution also gives parliament the power of impeachment. But in our 100 plus years of history, no parliament has ever impeached anybody. And that's despite judicial reviews, that's despite complaints of people being corrupt. They don't have the backbone. They, they are too weak. The politicians are too self-interested to have ever impeached anybody in Australia. But in America... You have had a house that has impeached 19 federal officers, of which were 15 federal judges, two presidents, one cabinet secretary, and one U.S. senator. It's been done before, it can be done, and it should be done again. The founding fathers never intended for the third branch of government to legislate any laws or even to determine their constitutionality. And this is a lie that has been peddled and pushed on the people and on Christians. And actually, we have history uh, about this. Thomas Jefferson said, The opinion which gives to the judges the right to decide what laws are constitutional and what are not, not only for themselves in their own sphere of action, but for the legislature and the executive. This is how they've been defeating executive orders by the president would make the judiciary a despotic branch. That means a tyrannical branch. Thomas Jefferson continued in the writings of Thomas Jefferson, volume 11. You seem to consider the judges as the ultimate arbiters of all constitutional questions, a very dangerous doctrine indeed, and one which would place us under the despotism of an oligarchy. That means just a bunch of people instead of all the elected people that the people chose. Our judges are as honest as other men and not more so, said Jefferson. They have with others the same passions for party and for power. So we've covered what righteous people can do in politics. There is political impeachment. But you know, there's also spiritual impeachment. And we as the body of Christ need to begin to apply this spiritually and realize God has given us power to execute the written judgments of the Lord. And I want to give you a couple of examples. In fact, a ministry friend of mine recently told me that his sister had to go to court. But the judge, it turns out the judge they had in her case was a childhood buddy of the ex-husband. So the judge knowing this, should have recused himself, but he didn't. My ministry friend and his sister then prayed the scriptures and believed God. The court was set for a hearing on Monday and on the Friday before, that weekend before. Do you know what happened? That judge dropped dead. There is a God, and he is called the God of justice. And we don't pray any harm for anybody, but in this case, that is what happened. 
Do you think that's a coincidence? Here is another example of a ministry friend of mine who was praying for another judge. And he prayed Psalm 82. Psalm 82 is the judgment on unjust judges. There are many judgments like that in the Bible that Christians haven't seen because we're only looking at righteousness and grace and mercy, but we haven't seen the other side. Jesus is the lamb, but he's also the lion. We are to pray as priests, but we're also to execute judgment as kings. Jesus has made us both kings and priests. We have the gospel of salvation. We have the gospel of the kingdom. This has all been neglected, and this is why I taught our church in Australia, I taught this for more than 10 hours. It's called the Justice Series, the Biblical Justice Series. I wish everybody would learn that. I wish this would spread. I believe it will spread to the churches of, a, of the world. But uh, he prayed. He took Psalm 82 and he prayed to remove, this is the Psalm, to remove corrupt judges who were not leading America down the right path. And he had a passion for this. He was praying for this. And you know what? Within a few months, the judge that he prayed for was diagnosed with early stages of Alzheimer's and dementia, and then she voluntarily resigned. You see, it, it doesn't have to be that, you know, every time you pray, somebody drops dead, like Elijah Cummings um, and this other judge. It, it's, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. It's not up to us. We must have pure motives, pure heart, a forgiving attitude. We always offer people a chance and mercy first. But if somebody is harming others, harming children, harming babies, and they will not repent, then God has given us the authority to pray Psalm 82. So I want to show you Psalm 82, and I want to ask you to begin praying this for the next 30 days. I believe that amazing changes will happen before the year is over if we will pray this judicial psalm. And there are many, many other scriptures like that, but I just want to give you one today. Psalm 82, listen to these words. And this is David. By the way, David was the man after God's own heart. And God said through Kim Clement that God will raise up somebody who will have, who will be a man after God's own heart. And so definitely you can point to the Psalms and say, this is how a man after God's own heart would pray. Psalm 82. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Children need fathers. Defend them. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the fountains of the earth are unstable. I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. And these princes refer to the judges. These are not just the children of the king. Arise, O God, judge the earth. Can we pray that for 30 days? Arise, O God, and judge the earth. Come on. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. I'm just amazed to be standing here and to have the privilege to proclaim this prophetic word. I believe that it's in line with what the Holy Spirit showed Kim just a few years ago. But the time has come for Trump to be a trumpet. The time has come that when they are shouting impeach, impeach, God will sling this back the other way and the corrupt will be impeached. The wicked will be impeached and judges will be removed either politically, judicially or spiritually and by the miracle, the hand of God. This is the time. But Kim also said, where is the voice of unity? Where is the voice of my people agreeing with each other? What we need to do is believe the prophecy, believe it, speak it, declare it for the next 30 days. And I'm going to see, you're going to see what God is going to do for this nation. He is a great God. Amen. Mm -hmm.